I actually don't usually need a mic. I'm not like Brian. I'm not nice, nice and calm, you know. All right. Oh, boy, I'm up there. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here first. Uh, as you can see, uh, I'm Dave Maiulo from Rutgers University. I'm the demonstration expert there. I've been doing it for quite a while, so let's move on with our talk. Uh, so what, we're, what are we going to cover? I was like telling people what we're going to cover. So who I am, OK? Uh, what's a scientist? You know, I've seen some really great talks this morning, actually, in the plenary, and of course with Brian just now. Uh, what's a scientist? Good thing to think about. Demonstration show do's and demonstration show don'ts. Hey, I'm an expert in demonstration shows. I'm going to tell you what I know. Uh, apparatus ideas, uh, giveaways, show themes, uh, funding sources, and examples of successful demonstrations. Um, you should all have a pair of diffraction grading glasses, right? They're my gift to you, okay? When's the last time some APS actually gave you something, okay? Yesterday. Yesterday. There you go, good. So who am I? Well, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, don't say anything, Brian, okay? Yeah. Uh, 25 years of performing public physics demonstration shows. Uh, all these memberships, right? We get involved in lots of different groups as we move through our uh, careers. And uh, I wrote a book about physics demonstrations. And a uh, physics presenter on many TV shows. The, light the latest one was Wonderama, which I watched as a kid, which is kind of fun to be on Wonderama, right? Why not? And uh, I created, I think I can move here. Uh, this show, which is on that set of seats, but not over here because I didn't have the time to actually place them out. But there's lots of these if you want to see it. It's kind of fun to actually like take a look at, and it's even more fun to go see. So come see us. Uh, been doing it for a long time, 3.5 years, and over 340 shows, and uh, 65,000 people have seen it in Manhattan, which is kind of exciting. I was actually supposed to do a show in Spokane last week, but that got canceled, but that's the way life is. So what's a scientist? Well, this is the kernel for this talk, the particular talk. This is what I really want to focus on, because we want to actually get people, young people, to think about what's it like being in society. How does the science affect them, science affect them, and all those other things? Well, we're all scientists. And unless it's a tie-dyed lab coat, don't wear a lab coat when you're in front of people talking about science. Humanize it. Be a human being in front of them. They'll accept it a lot more, OK? Uh, and in the way I do it, you can do it in any way you want. I, and a demo show should be a conversation about science. Okay? It really should be. Discussion. Uh, you can teach the scientific method. This is something that's actually very important to me, is actually giving the scientific method to young people. Give them something to hang, something that, to, what's a fact? You know, what, how do I actually learn something? That's really important. And you can do that with very effective demonstrations. You can you know, say, hey, what's going to happen when I do this? They'll come up with all kinds of ideas, which is great. Then you go ahead and do that experiment right in front of them. Then they'll say, OK, so then I say, well, so what actually happened? And then they say, oh, well, this is what happened. So now they actually know. You've cleared something up. It's a great thing to do to, for people. What's a fact? Well, the, the politics of, of science right now. It's kind of amazing how much we've politicized even physics. But facts are facts. Physics is the law. Everything else is opinion, right? We show them physics. You don't have to worry about anything else. As Brian says, he introduces a few things, then he just shows them the physics. And that's where we really can win. So uh, ooh, did I go too far? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, no. Demonstration show dues. Um, so. I don't know if any of you do demonstration shows or just demonstrations in your classroom, but to me, and I know it's a long list, I don't have to go through the whole thing, but use things that people are familiar with. Kids, doesn't matter. Whatever you're familiar with. Does everybody know what a, a can of soda is? Yes. Does everybody know what a can of diet soda is? Yes. Does everybody know what salt is? Yes. Does everybody know what water is? I hope so. You've probably taken a bath, right? So you know these things. You don't have to tell them, well, I got this substance that does this. What's the point in that? They don't believe you right off the bat. So use things they know. Uh, sight lines are important. Can you see what's going on? Doing a demonstration like this means what to them? Nothing. 
They don't see a darn thing. So make sure they can see it. Uh, make it real, simplify your language, know your audience. When I talk to a, 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 a group of, uh, you know, let's say kindergartners, the first graders, you have to use a very different language than when you use it for an adult talk. You really do. So tailor your language to, to your audience. It's actually very important. Uh, as a really effective demonstration, you do only one thing. If I say, well, I'm going to do this demonstration, I'm going to flip this switch, then turn this knob, then, you know, this thing's going to fall in it, and here's what will happen. They say, I don't get it. If I say, I'm going to do this, and this is what's going to happen, they get it. Change only one thing. Show them demos in which they can continue to experiment. Those diffraction grading glasses, when I use them in my shows or in a classroom, I make sure they know they can use them to be scientists themselves outside of the classroom. Explain how. Look at the full moon. Look at holiday lights. You know, use these, uh, use these things you're giving them, the tools, okay? Uh, use humor. As Brian said, humor is great. Make jokes. I have built-in jokes to a lot of my demonstrations. It works fantastic. And energy. Don't be up there going, yeah, this is what's... Uh, be energetic. Science is fun that way. Uh, so examples of F equals MA. You do this in front of anybody. They get it, right? Uh, does everybody know what a hammer is? We know what a hammer is. Say yes or no. Yeah, good. Do you know what a sponge is? Yes or no. You don't know. You've never used a sponge. Oh, boy. Do you know what a piece of wood is? Yeah. And they don't all know what it feels like, the, uh, what a lead brick is. But I pick it up, and I struggle with it, and then I drop it on the table. I hear it hit the table. You use the fact that it makes a big noise when it hits the table. They know, oh, that's massive. And they've heard about lead. They have. So it works very well. So here's our experiment. I'm going to do force is equal to mass times acceleration. Right? What's my force? Do they know a hammer is a force? Yeah, they've heard their parents hit themselves in the thumb with a the hammer. They know, right? And then they know those objects are different masses. So if you do it, that accelerates fast, not as much, and not at all. What parameter did I change? One. You just the hammer. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I take the brick and I put it on my hand and I vigorously hit myself in the hand with a hammer, and then they kind of get it too. So you're going to have some fun. Uh, demonstration show don'ts. Don't do a PowerPoint. Here I am doing a PowerPoint, sorry. Uh, try not to use a computer. Really, it distracts them. They're in front of what screen all day long? Their computer. You don't need to give them another screen to look at. It's the wrong way to approach it. Uh, try not to use simulations. Look, I love FET. I really do. And I'll talk about it in a little bit. But I never do a simulation in my shows, ever. Show them the real physics. What's the point? You can have a lot of fun with the physics. You don't have to show them a simulation. Don't get bogged down. When things go wrong, move on. Just move. Do the next thing. Don't worry about it. You have a lot of fun things to show them. Something doesn't work, hey, so what? Don't get in an argument. Believe it or not, that's a hard thing to do sometimes. Really, especially with adult audiences, because they'll start to debate you. And you have to either shut it down or make a joke or do something and move on from there. Don't get in that argument. It's the show's for everybody, not just that one person. And don't acknowledge hecklers, even drunk ones. And I've had both, okay? I've done shows in bars in New York, right? Oh, that's a lot of fun. You should try it. <laughs> Sources of demonstration ideas, the Exploratorium. I'm not giving you the websites. You guys can order a pizza from Mars so you know how to look this stuff up. Uh, Perimeter Institute, one of the, my favorite new ones, fantastic stuff online. Uh, the LIGO team, really creative. Out of the last couple years, that's one of my favorites. Look up to what they're doing online. Look up what they, they, they reach out and do. They're very great people, too. Oh, here he is, Brian Jones. Yes, that's right. He has a wonderful selection and collection of things that he does. A lot of it's online, but they're nice people. If you want advice about what to do, they will tell you, as he just did. Uh, of course, social media, YouTube, Mythbusters, science shows, other media, we're surrounded by it. We're kind of drowning in it, actually, but it's all out there. So if you want ideas, go ahead and do it. Um, this is, to me, 
where you really get the, the real ideas. PIRA, the Physics Instru Instructional Resource Association, these are the people who do what I do all across the country, and they're a wonderful group of people. And if you, wanna under if you want a demonstration, let's say, to show, I don't know, centrifugal force, whatever you want to talk about, you will come up with two billion demonstrations by looking at this one website. That's the only one I gave you. But they'll give you every idea you want. And then if you don't understand how to do it, you use Tab Bell, which is the whole network of people who do what we do. You send out a question, and you say, hey, I, I need a demonstration to, let's say, Monkey and Hunter. Well, they'll tell you just how to do it in an easy, the best way to do it at the, at the time. They're great. I can't say enough about how good they are. And uh, Maker Fairs, so that's one of the latest ones, too, that are a lot of fun. I'm going to go do a demo show in a Maker Fair in two months. That should be a lot of fun. Any questions there? Yes? So you don't have APS upstairs? No, I don't. APS No, I don't think so. It's, a, it's just that I don't work with them. Right. You guys are so serious. <laughs> uh, giveaways. Well, you got one right here. Diffraction grading glasses, right? There they are. It's not that expensive. Uh, oriental trader items. Anybody know what Oriental trader is? You hear of it? No? Okay, so Oriental trader sells little uh, brick brack physics and science toys. Not very expensive, but if you want to give little things out to a group of kids, it's actually an ideal thing. Now, a lot of it's junky. You have to go through it and see which ones you want to actually use to, and what specific physics you want to do, but it's there. And they are a lot of fun things. And it's cheap. It's very cheap. Uh, simple physics items. I've seen these given away in many demonstration shows. Rattlebacks with the name of the school on them. Um, you, can, you can order that, believe it or not. Uh, Center of Mass Toys. Uh, Texas Tech is giving them away uh, for their demonstration out outreach stuff. They give somebody, give people, uh, everybody who shows up, a little hanger. You use a belt and you show that Center of Mass and how, how well that works. It's really kind of neat. Their name's on it too. Falling Rulers. I made those a couple years ago. Just make a ruler, and you talk about, okay, reaction time. The ruler falls a certain amount of a distance, right? You catch it in a certain spot. You can measure exactly where it is because it's a ruler, right? How, basically, you can figure out your rea reaction time. It's a lot of fun. And then on the other side, put Rutgers Physics on it. How easy is that? FET info. Now, I don't use FET in my shows, but I do say, look, if you're interested in some of these concepts, Look that up. Play with it. Because they're going to play with computer stuff anyway. So you might as well give them the best one to play with, right? Because they really are the best. Uh, show themes. There's a billion. Um, history of physics. You can really do the history of physics, really. You can, you can go through the whole physics of almost any apparatus and how much it's changed over time. Uh, semester of physics. Just do a semester of physics. Do the particular favorite demonstrations through a semester. Uh, individual physics topics. We know them all, right? We work with them all the time. Holiday physics. Hey, the physics of Halloween, right? Valentine's Day. That's always a lot of fun. Really, you can do these as shows, right? Uh, Thanksgiving. The tablecloth and dishes one with the Thanksgiving turkey on the table. That's always a lot of fun, actually, because then the mom screams in the background when you're you know, about to pull the turkey off the table, the cooked turkey off the table. Uh, current physics and astronomy topics, uh, be topical. That's actually one of the fun things, because they have these things in their heads, because they've seen like that picture of the black hole right? that's just out. So they talk about the black hole. So they want to know a little bit more about it. Use that as an opportunity. Really, it works. Equipment topics. Uh, do a whole show using, using balloons. You can do it. You really can. And if you don't know how, use Tap L. They'll give you lots of ideas on how you can use balloons in almost every area of physics. Really. Uh, cans. Soda cans. I can do a whole show just using soda cans. Our show. How many ways are there to crush a soda can? Do you know? Figure it out. Uh, do a show on using water, bubbles, whatever. Here's our public policy stuff, though. So as Brian just talked about, this is his one on global warming. That's great. But you can also do a whole demo show on energy sources, right? Or energy conservation and what it means. You know, just have one of those bikes that you have to have someone pedal and then add more and more bulbs of a specific type. And you watch how hard it gets to pedal as you add a lot more incandescence, right? Do that kind of thing. Connect it with people. Uh, 
So funding sources. Yeah, that's why I'm lying on the bed of nails, right? Money. Uh, so STEM funding, right? There are a lot of groups interested in doing more STEM outreach. Reach out. Uh, with the Maker Faire, they're going to pay for me to go in there and actually do the whole show, pay for all the supplies that I need. They want me to do that, so they're going to help me do it. Uh, the local industry. In Iowa, I know the gentleman there, Dale Stelly, he's all hooked up with the local industry, and they pay for him to go off and do his Iowa demonstration show for all the different local schools. It's really great. Libraries. I'm, uh, every state pretty much has a list of libraries. They basically, well, if you want to talk at libraries, you have to sign up for it. But I've added my name to that list as, as in going in and doing physics shows, astronomy shows. Because this year's theme is actually astronomy, so I'm going to do astronomy shows. But then they all kind of hook, they kind of get in touch with you, and I let them pay for the funding for me to go there. But at the same time, I'm hooked into all these libraries in the state of New Jersey. And it's an easy thing to do. Every state should probably has one of those, so look, look that up. Your own institution, of course. Most institutions are very happy for you to do something that raises the public level and the respect of, your, of their school. So you know, talk to them about it. Talk to the dean. Uh, AAPT and the Bowder Fund. Now, AAPT has the Bowder Fund. And does anybody know what the Bowder Fund is? Okay, so the Bowder, what you want to do, is, again, you know how to order a pizza from Mars. I'm not going to tell you the exact address, but look up Bowder Fund and AAPT. They will give you, let's say you want to hand out diffraction grading glasses. They'll pay for all the glasses. Let's say you want to hand out stuff from Oriental Trader. They'll pay for all the Oriental Trader stuff. You just have to do a very simple little grant fund thing, send it into them, they'll send you cash. How nice is that? As long as it's not permanent equipment, as long as it's stuff you're giving to to someone to take with them, they'll pay for it. So you can buy a whole lot of diffraction grading glasses. And APSC added them, see? You guys are nice too. Example, so, um, you know, I brought this, and I was actually gonna do smoke rings in this room, but I don't wanna shut down the whole, you know, meeting by setting off the smoke detectors and having the police come here and all that stuff, so I, I'm not gonna do that with that. But I'm gonna show you what my show's about. How much time I got? Uh, you, you've got uh, Lots of time. I talk fast. Can you hear that? Is there a way to turn it up? OK. Oh, yeah. It's a good idea. This is me in my off-Broadway production. I don't know. But let's see some real evidence. And a lot of very good science is done. But the effect one thing has on another. Without actually seeing what's going on. You see the effect. We don't actually see the actual action. And right here, Ashley's got pretty hair. She's also got a nice candle. And if I go ahead and do this, I can blow the candle out and move it. So now you can say to yourself, yes, I know something happened. But did you actually see what was going on here? No. You saw me push the end, and that went out. You didn't see the shape, the force of this, what the form was. Let's actually look at that. Because if I use a little glycerin fog, put it inside this scientific device, you tell me what I was doing every time I hit the end of this, because it was happening every single time I hit the end of this. You tell me. Yes. This is going on every time I hit the end. Awesome. Every single time. And don't you want to build one now? Yes. I built this up with fog and went out to Times Square. They followed me down the street. I did a smoke green guy, like one of those other characters, right? In fact, if you know this, I can actually make it move differently. Just slow, just kind of floats them off very fast. So it's an energy pulse also. Not just a pulse of a ring, but an energy pulse. Yeah, that's so, is that fun? Hey, what's that shape? It's a circle. What's that shape? <laughs> so as scientists, what are we going to see? Small squares or 
small circle. like that? Yeah. That's fun, wasn't it? Uh, that's my show. It's an hour and a half long of that. Me, basically, just doing physics. And it works. And it can work for anybody, really. Uh, anybody can really do the same kind of thing in their classroom or in outreach or inspire young people to think, to accept the fact that they already are thinking like scientists. Because they really already are. You just have to show them how they're thinking that way. That's really the important thing here. Okay. Uh, thank yous. Well, Rutgers for paying my way here. Uh, APS for inviting me to come here. And Kevin, specifically. Thank you, Kevin, for, for actually getting me here. And you for listening to me. Uh, there's my contact information. I'm just going to leave that up. Uh, but I'm not done. I'm not done. Uh, I did bring this, okay, and I can use it. And it's actually quite powerful. But some lucky person here gets to take this home. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you a portable fogger with fogger fluid. And I'm going to give you the two blanks. Here's a square, OK? And what's that? That's an ellipse. That's an ellipse. Do you know when you put an ellipse in front of the circle, what do you think you get with a smoke ring? What do you think you get? Are you curious? Of course you're curious. You actually get a propagating quadrupole motion. What else moves like that? You got it. You can do a gravitational wave demonstration with this. Think how lovely that is. And when LIGO first kind of showed that gravitational wave information in the public sphere, when you're able to show them what that's about, think about how powerful that is. Think about how it's no longer an esoteric thing in front of them. That's the beauty of this, OK? So I'm going to give somebody this, whoever wants it. Uh, but you have the glasses, right? So can we turn the lights out? Probably not, right? Put your glasses on. I want you to all look silly. Come on. Can we blank the screen even? Oh, five minutes? OK. So what do you see when you look at that light bulb? Rainbows. Don't we all love rainbows? And doesn't this start, spark? You can do a whole discussion of waves. Light, right? Just with this, talking about infrared, talking about ultraviolet. Yeah, go side to side like a bird flying, isn't it? It's fun. So this, this is powerful just like what you're doing right there. Yeah, turn it sideways. Put two together. It's a whole lot of fun. Talk to them about what they can actually do with this outside that show. Being a scientist outside the show, these are great tools. But, and I borrowed this from, uh, I didn't borrow this particular apparatus, but I did borrow this from, uh, this idea from uh, Stan McLavinia from U of O. He showed me this and I thought it was just lovely. Um, take a look at that. Now, what happens in your glasses as those lights change color? Oh, did it go out? What happens in your glasses as the lights change color? What do you see in the glasses? You see color what? Color mixing in action. 
You see what each one of those colors is made from. Is that fun to watch? Do you think the kids go, wow? Yeah. Yes. You can, someone lucky can have this too. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I have no problem spreading out my, uh, my physics to people. I don't know how long this cord is. Oh, goody. One of my favorite things to do is uh, basically stop misconceptions. We can turn the lights back up too if you want. Uh, stop misconceptions. Okay, so uh, Newton saw what fall? The apple. The apple falls, right? And then he did what? That's the legend, right? He looked up at the moon. And what did he say to himself? Right, the moon is being pulled by Earth's gravity all the time, too. So why doesn't the moon fall? So I do this demonstration in, in my audiences, right? And I talk about F equals MA first, because if I take this and throw it, it goes in a straight line, right? Gravity takes over, it falls. But if I throw it and then catch it with a string, how does it move? In a circle. Why? What's on it? A central force. Circular motion is due to a central force. Gravity pulls as what? On the moon as what? A central force. So why doesn't the moon fall? And I ask kids this, or I ask my audience this, and adults too. And you know what they all tell me? There's no gravity in outer space. Why do they tell me that? Because they see the astronauts floating. It's a very common misconception. They don't get it. They see that and they say, there's no gravity. So you show them, no, it's not that. It's that the moon is moving what? So what? Fast. That's why it stays in orbit. If the moon were to slow down, what would happen? It would fall, right? And if I slow this pillow down, what does it, what does it actually do? Fall. And that's fun to see. You look, it's even a little moon pillow, right? Have fun. But then you take this, right? What's this? It's a wine glass. And what's this? A very flat tray. Can you do the same thing? Because I've never done this before. <laughs> you never sit in a front row to demo show. Bad idea. So how does that wine glass stay on the tray? No, it doesn't include. How do I have to move this tray so it stays on there? Really fast. Really, you think it'll work? That's exactly the reaction you want. Oh my God, because you know what? It works. <laughs> Circular motion, central forces. And what you do is you talk about that bucket with the water in it. Let them go home and try it. Give them the tools to be scientists. All right? And that's basically my talk. So any questions? Thank you. Yes. Uh, so I'm in LIGO, and uh, you guys are great. the first person I've ever heard say, did you start stock? What do you use? <laughs> <laughs> you, when I worked with you guys in New Orleans, and um, basically you had a lot of great stuff with light, yeah, yeah. and I took a lot of those ideas and I brought them on home and I showed them to my, I, you see, I do demonstration shows, so a lot of what you do is kind of interactive on kind of a classroom scale, like Brian does with his kind of interactive demonstrations is that people go around them, but we still do a lot of that too. And so I've, I've ad actually adopted a lot of those things. But you guys are so much fun. We're going to use that link. That, oh, please. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody want to try the Greek waiter's tray? No? No? No other questions? OK. We're done. You go. Thank you.